Hello, Michael, Bay Area Hiking Guides, and I'm up here on Lime Ridge, and we're going to talk about rattlesnakes because that's a common thing that keeps coming up, and how to avoid them and kind of work around them when you're hiking. Hey everybody, this is Michael from Bay Area Hiking Guides, and we're going to talk about rattlesnakes. It's one of the most common things that come up every day. I get this a lot. I got this from when I was on uh, Neighborhood Watch. Those guys are awesome. Check them out. But uh, one of the big things that uh, a lot of people are worried about is like these snakes are going to come out and bite you on the neck. <laughs> like it's going to, you know, be some kind of Hollywood movie. And that's not the case at all. It really isn't. They don't want to strike you. They don't want to, you know, have some aggressive behavior towards you. These aren't Mojave Greens we're dealing with. These are your Western rattlesnakes, Western Pacific rattlesnakes to be exact. They are very abundant in the area of the Bay Area and some areas more than others. You see them a lot in the woodland areas, a lot of Mount Diablo, Lime Ridge, a lot of those walk around here. And they love to be out, especially in the spring and in the fall. And they tend to have the babies and they don't do it by egg they're doing it directly through it's right out of the old rattlesnake there they're not hatched by egg and they'll come out in the fall time so typically it's between uh, september and october is when you're going to see them so the best thing to deal with your fear is to understand the rattlesnake understand its potential and understand that it's not out there to get you and a lot of people that end up getting bit by rattlesnakes is typically from the ankle or from the hand, the, the wrist, because they're trying to grab at them or because they accidentally step on them because they're not looking at where they're going. Is I use my hiking pole to tap the area. So I also have this um, duct tape that's on my hiking pole. And that I use just in case I have a blister on my foot or in case I need duct tape, you never know when it just unravels, works out great. But the other thing that I use for my hiking pool is I'll use it as a way to kind of tap my environment a little bit. I'm gonna go to the rock and I'm gonna kind of tap around it a little bit. Now this one's a little smaller than your typical larger rock, but I'm gonna kind of do that to kind of see if they're gonna spur her off or make that sound. One of the great things about rattlesnakes is they're kind of going to let you know they're there. They're going to rattle, which is really awesome. It's great for us. And this kind of can cause them to rattle or they can kind of skitter off a little bit, but not always. And using your eyes as your visual. And, and look at where you're going. I've got a bigger boulder here, so I'm going to tap that. And if, if they don't move, I'm going to keep my eyes as well. So I'm going to tap it, but I'm also going to be vigilant in seeing if there's anything around it. And I'm going to continue to go forward. I'm not going to be quick with my movement in an area with a lot of leaves or debris or fallen trees. I'm going to be slow with my movements and be vigilant with what's going on. If they're on a larger firewood fire road trail, I'm going to see those snakes a lot easier than if I'm on a trail like I am today or if I'm kind of off the trail. That's why it's not really good to go off trail because you're more likely going to run into them. Slow but also vigilant with your eyes and knowing the area. So the person that's in front of your group is the one that wants to be vigilant in looking around. You can hold a conversation, but be vigilant at the same time to what's going on around you. And if you see a snake, you can stop, hold up the rest of the group, let them know the snake's nearby, and then work with what you need to do next. So now we're in a situation where we've stopped the group and we need to know what we need to do next. We're gonna work our way around the area when we're walking around the area we're going to stay a good distance away from the snake if you can stay a good 10 feet away or more great and also be cautious of the area nearby where you're moving because sometimes you can find another snake and when we do this we're going to continue to pass by make sure the rest of the group is going by and you're a good show if the snake's curled up it doesn't want to be disturbed it doesn't want to be bothered. Don't go and try to bother the snake. Don't pick it up. Don't purposely move rocks around. It is something that you want to just leave the snake be and go around it. They're not going to come at you. This is not Hollywood. It is so crucially important to not disturb these creatures. Don't try to pick them up. Don't try to be a commando. Never ever grab them and throw them. Doing that could get you in, in danger and it can also harm danger to the snake. 
and that's not really fun at all for anybody is when i'm sitting down if i'm gonna sit down and i'm gonna sit you know it's almost like you're a blind man here looking looking for a place to sit well so be it if you might look like a fool but you're being cautious and you're being safe so you're gonna go through and you're gonna kind of tap the area a little bit and i'm gonna sit down and i'm just gonna be cautious of where i'm sitting down and i'm gonna have my lunch a lot of people can get striked that way not being cautious of where they're at. Fear works out a whole lot better if you have an understanding of what you're afraid of. It's going to make it a lot easier. When you get bit, the number one thing you're going to want to do, and it's the most difficult thing to do for a lot of people, is to not panic. <clears throat> the faster you panic and the faster you get into that kind of mode, the more quicker that venom's going to react. It's going to start going into your bloodstream, going into your body, and it's gonna start reacting a lot quicker. They can inject venom, but there is a lot of cases where it's, it's a bite and it's a dry bite. So you're gonna want to seek attention as soon as possible. You don't wanna go and go home and be like, hey man, I can go home and do a remedy and it'll work out just fine, bro. Don't do that. Seek help as best as you can. Now, if you're away from your car, you've got some distance to go, you're gonna be able to walk, you should be fine to get reception, to get contact, find somebody, and then go ahead and seek the help that you need to. You'll have a few hours, you can manage. When the bite hits you, it, when you get injected, it's usually gonna be two punctures, sometimes it's only one. You're gonna get the uh, hot sensation, you're gonna feel the pain. A good idea is always to take a picture of it as well, because that way, at the hospital, they can get a better understanding of what kind of snake it was. Um, if you're unfamiliar with snakes, but always for them too, they can see it and go, okay, that's what got you. Um, don't try to pick it up, throw it, get angry at it, bash it with a head or any of that stuff. Um, you want to immediately get away from the snake and get to your car and get help. But to remain calm is the most important thing to do. The Boy Scout old, old book of survival to put a tourniquet on it, don't do that. Okay, uh, it's going to make things a lot more difficult if you do that. Most of the bites are by hand, by arm, so a lot of people that are grabbing them are touching them when they shouldn't be. Um, if you can get your arm to hang on a sling and then have it from there and just rest it, not too tight, um, and keep it up if you get hit by the arm or, or the hand, you're in good hands. Um, do not try to cut through it. Don't try to suck the blood out. Don't try to, you know, use your pocket knife and, and try to get the venom out. It's not going to work. And do not suck on it because what that's going to do is you're going to put bacteria in it from your mouth and you got a whole nother problem. Survival kits, the snake bite kits that they have, do not work. Um, they've done numerous studies and they don't work. It's just best to have the professionals handle it. And, and when you're out there and they're trying to do stuff with this venom or trying to open up the wound or the bite or whatever to try to get the venom out, you're going to go, you're going to cause more of a problem than you really think. And a lot of the issues that a lot of these doctors have with people that get bit, they end up having a bigger problem because somebody tried to do it themselves by cutting through it and they make a whole lot bigger problem. Remaining calm is the best thing to do and get to your car, seek help. Having a phone, having a, having a set of keys is the most important. It's always good to hike, hike with a buddy too. That way if you need to have your buddy go out to the car, you have that capability to do that. I, I hike alone, it's plenty of occasions where I've done that, but it's always nice to have a buddy with you. Also, to let people know where you're at. If you're not home by a certain ETA, they know, okay, something happened and they can send help out on the exact trail that you're, you're located on. So, and writing on a board, say, hey, I'm gonna be on this trail, we're going this location, we're coming back at this ETA, these are the trails we're gonna be on, this is the trailhead we're gonna come from. Great informative information so somebody can come and seek help if they have not seen you within that ETA. That's a great thing to do. Now, I've heard people wearing jeans where the, the snake bites and they have not been able to puncture through the jeans. Um, there's been a lot of studies on that. I, I'm not a jean fan. Uh, jeans are a whole nother problem by themselves. Uh, jeans is another topic. Stay on the trail. You know, ultimately you're, you're going to run into these things when you're off the trail more than you're going to run into them when you're on the trail. Although I run into them on both occasions. Um, and to be really, really, your ears are, their key players to use those to your, your advantage. Treat it like it is venom. Treat it like it is rattlesnake, regardless of the snake, just to be on the safe side. Remember that rattlesnakes have that uh, triangle-shaped head used by gopher snakes because gopher snakes kind of look like a rattlesnake. But gophers have that really shiny, smooth look to them, and they don't have the rattle. But the gopher snakes do have a tendency to puff up their head, and they'll puff it up, 
and they'll act all defensive and they'll make the sound and mimic the rattle of a rattlesnake. It's pretty interesting. But thank you so much. Don't forget, like and subscribe. I just met one of the avid fans of Bay Area Hiking Guides. Um, right here on the trail, she recognized me. Shout out to you. Thank you so much. All right, just a shout out to Ryan for being a cameraman today. Fantastic work. And uh, hanging out here in the field of battle with the pouring down rain. Thank you, Ryan. Anytime, Michael. You're awesome.